Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm going to move on to the next step of the winemaking. So if you didn't see the first step, it was actually in a this and that video that I had. And I'll go ahead and link to that right up here. But I'll go ahead and talk you through some more of this. And I did take a few pictures that I'll be showing you along the way. So the first thing you want to do when you're making your wine is to start off with your juice. Now, whatever it is you're going to use, whatever fruit you're going to use, I highly recommend whatever it is you go with the more labor intensive method of mashing your fruit now for me I did use on the grapes after I froze them I used this fruit masher that Patrick made me but I recommend if you're able and we're going to be doing eventually is investing in a fruit press you know or it can be called a wine press I want to get a, an antique one myself because I you know I love anything that's antique and usable and so that's the plan we've been eyeballing some on Etsy so we'll be getting one of those eventually but that's going to be the best method all the way around especially if it's going to work for just about any fruit so what I did with uh, this batch right here this is actually blackberry and grape so I used a, a big one gallon bag of the grapes from our own vines that I froze up and then the rest of it was was about six cups of blackberries well maybe about four cups of blackberries actually because I took a couple cups out to make some popsicles and with the blackberries I tried using putting them in the blender and then I found out it just was still too much pulp and I still ended up having to strain a quite a bit of it out I did leave some in here I think it's good to have some of the pulp in the wine when you're doing that I think that's going to help with the whole process the fermentation I I recommend doing like you would with the grapes and that's mashing them you don't and, and now if your grapes like my grapes if they have seeds in them you do not want to put them in a blender you want to stick to mashing them because you don't want those seeds in there especially blended up they're going to add a bitter flavor to your wine and you definitely don't want that now blackberry seeds are fine but like I said, the mashing that up and putting, you know, having the, it just made it too, it, I think it made it a lot harder to strain out. So next time, I'm only going to mash them like I would the grapes. So anyway, I did put some of the pulp in here, and I'm going to bring the camera over and show you up close both of these, what they're doing right now. This one back here is the one I started in that first video, and um, it's ready for me to move on to the next step because I think it's been right about two weeks. I'm not really keeping track of the time. I'm going by what I see, and I'll show you that here in a minute. So anyway, back to just to give you a rough overview. You have your juice, and then what you're going to have is one cup of your fermentation starter, which whatever one it is. I have a couple of videos on how to make a fermentation starter. In fact, my oldest one, back when my lighting was really poor and all that, is actually my most popular video. It's got about 100,000 views on it right now. But anyway, I'll link it to the newer one because the lighting's better and it's slightly more condensed and I talk about a little bit more information than that on how to make your fermentation starter. Basically, you can do that with any fruit. This one is a goji berry. It actually started out as a raisin one. Raisins make a really great fermentation starter. And this one is the uh, blueberries. And I do want to be starting a new one pretty soon. I think I'm just going to wait until I have some fresh fruit. It is best to do it with fresh fruit when you're talking about making your starter. So what you're going to use is one cup of your fermentation starter. And what I recommend you do first is take a few cups uh, three or four cups of your juice to start with you're going to add three cups of sugar in that and mix it well in a big like you know a big eight cup batter bowl and you know get that sugar to dissolve in there as best as you can don't worry about if it doesn't all dissolve just get as much of it dissolved as you can because it is going to be pretty thick and yes you do need that much sugar when you're making wine it's very important remember if you're new to all this whenever something is fermenting with sugar the sugar gets converted into alcohol if it's going to be made into vinegar from that point it stays uncovered and it goes from alcohol to vinegar but you have to have sugar you can't get wine or vinegar without having some type of sugar in there and the the more sugar in your wine the stronger it's going to be but you don't want to put too much right from the start now if you're using really sweet fruit 
you I would say start off with one to two cups of sugar because otherwise it will slow the fermentation uh, process down and it may not even get going in fact this one because of the blackberries being fairly sweet sweeter than my grapes and me going ahead and doing the three cups of sugar it took longer for it to really start bubbling like it's doing now where this one over here didn't this one took off really well but this one's bubbling good it's very healthy it's it's going good and it's not ready for the next step but let me show you up close how both of these look okay so here is the one that i started in that last video it is this is all grape and you can see how the color looks usually when i start like when i started my from fresh grapes uh, this looked very green and then it turned this color as it went along Okay, and notice I left some space in here now I did that for two reasons and one is because it will help prevent it from bubbling over now this one I had a video I did not too long ago where I didn't realize so I was done shooting the video in the background You can see this thing right before I started shooting the video must have started going crazy because before that it wasn't It just had water in it But what will happen is sometimes when it's really going ballistic is this fruit even with it this low Will start bubbling up the pulp and come up into into your cork and then into your airlock and then it will cause uh, it'll, It can cause some blockage. It can cause this thing to actually blow up. I've only had that happen once But it was enough but if you can, as you can see, this is moving very slow. In fact, a, a, a bit ago, it looked like it had come to a complete stop. This is how I know I'm ready for the next step in this process. Now I'm going to come over here and show you the blackberry. You can see what it's doing. It's a consistent. It's it's moving just consistently. See that? So it's very active right now. I don't need to do anything with it. And again, see how low I left this. There's a reason for that besides just not wanting too much in there so that it doesn't uh, bubble over. But this is also why I have these pans down here. You can see here, you can, you can see that right down in here, it had bubbled over and leaked down there, but that kept it from going onto my counter. Okay, so I'm going to move on to the next step, show you what I do. Now this step is optional but i recommend it because it's going to give you a stronger and better wine the last batch of wine that i made i've been making wine for years i took a break from for a long time because i quit drinking and i still don't drink however i'm finding so many uses for having the wine on hand for making extracts whether they be medicinal or for flavor and for cooking with that i wanted to get back into it and plus i know there's people that want to learn how to do this as it's a very useful skill to have whether you drink or not it is very useful so anyway this next step that last batch that i made i did using this step and it is the best wine i have ever made yeah i would say it was even better than a lot of the honey wines that i made though i made some pretty good honey wines but anyway as far as a like a grape wine that one turned out the best anyway i'm going to take off the top of this and I'm going to pour just a little bit of this into my measuring cup here. Okay, not very much. I'm going to use a whole cup of sugar. Okay, probably help if you can see what I'm doing here. So I'm going to add this thing here is about, whoops, this thing here is about a half cup. So I'm going to put a whole cup of sugar in here. So I'm adding more sugar to the wine. This is going to ensure that it's going to be a stronger, better wine by doing this. Okay, and at this point, I really try to keep metal away from the wine when I'm working with it. Stainless steel will probably be fine, but I still prefer to keep it out of there. Uh, anyway, and then I'm going to pour or just a little bit of water in there. You want to kind of watch how much you're putting in there because you only have so much space to work with. Okay, and then just stir that really good. Again, it doesn't have to be completely dissolved. Just get it mixed really well because it will dissolve as it ferments. It, uh, you know, as you have it in there because we still have two more weeks to go on this one. Okay, again, I'm going to be using a plastic funnel because I try to avoid metal when I'm working with my wine and I'm just going to pour that in there. Make sure you stir it, especially if your sugar isn't fully dissolved. Make sure you stir it as you pour it. Okay, there we go. That was perfect. So that was another cup and a half of liquid all together, counting the sugar and the, and the uh, water and the little bit of wine that I, I pulled out of there that was ended up being a cup and a half. 
and that right there is about how high you want it for the rest of the process okay and then just put your airlock back on there and what you'll see not right away but what you'll see probably by the next day it is going to bubble it is going to move a little bit more at first simply because you moved this around and you got you got it more active again but keep an eye on it in the next day or two it's going to bubble start bubbling faster again all right so that is it for part two i'm still going to have another part because i still got to go over uh, what to do next once it is all done so stay tuned in about two weeks i'll be shooting another video on what happens next it's probably going to be done in several parts and i'm sorry i got to spread it out like this but it's really the best way to do it and it, it is kind of a longish process so just stay tuned you can get your wine started now by the time the video comes out you'll be ready uh, for those steps anyway and so again in case I didn't finish saying what I was saying about the, the starting process so you, you know you have your juice I said about three to four cups of juice with your three cups of sugar mix it real well put it in then add in your one cup of fermentation starter and then after you got all that in there then add the rest of the juice until you get it up to about this point you don't want it I would say right you know even a little bit lower you can have it to here because to keep in mind you're going to be adding some more liquid in it can be in the form of juice or it can be in the form of water like I did here just a sugar water so you want to have space to work with so when you add that in there it's uh you're not going to overflow the jug so yeah that's the way you want to do it adding the sugar about the halfway point adding in more sugar so especially if you started off your wine with maybe only two one to two cups of sugar then you're definitely going to want to add anywhere from one to two more cups of sugar at the halfway point so if you're going to put in two whole cups of sugar because maybe you only used one to get started with then i recommend um pouring out more of the wine into your measuring cup and then mix your sugar in with that because you want to make sure you have plenty of space because remember you're adding a whole cup of sugar or a whole two cups of sugar how much space do you have here and then like I said in about two weeks it'll be approximate you'll know when it's done because what will happen is this will stop bubbling altogether when it's completely done bubbling and the water in in your airlock is not moving at all then you'll know it's ready so if you're if you're just getting started and you don't have any of this equipment this is all you need you can start with just a one gallon jug you can do a five gallon carboy if you want at a time I prefer I've never actually done that I've just never been interested in making that much at a time because I always like making each batch a little bit different which is what I did when I made the honey wine the mead I always did it one gallon batches now I might have several one gallon batches going at a time but each one would be a different flavor whether it be raspberry strawberry triple berry uh, plum rose I had all kinds of different ones orange spice I even did a pumpkin spice uh, anyway you can either get your one gallon jugs by finding people who buy you know or maybe you that buy this cheaper wine maybe you were buying it and, and uh, save all these jugs I use these for storing our water in too and I get these I can find them at garage sales and I can even get them from friends that drink the wine that comes in these big jugs and they'll donate them to me but you can also find them online I will link to some one gallon jugs below it's cheaper if you can find them used but that's okay you know if you can't you know they're not that expensive and you can use them again and again typically they're six to ten dollars for the jug and then a couple of dollars for your for your stopper your drilled stopper and your airlock and sometimes you can buy it as a kit which I think I have a link to so I'll link to all of that stuff below that's really all you need to get started and then of course you need your juice your sugar and then your fermentation starter now I really believe you don't have to have a fermentation starter to get it going I prefer using it because it's going to ensure that your fruit is going to ferment oh and by the way for the first few days don't put the airlock on it once you got it in the jug just cover it with a cloth and a rubber band to keep dust and bugs out of it and but to let it escape it's not going to turn to vinegar in three days it takes a whole month for it to turn to vinegar so uh once it's really bubbly and you feel like it's calmed down enough try putting your airlock on there and again i recommend you go watch my first video on that it's a this and that video but it's in the first part i talk about it so you don't have to stick around for all the this and that stuff at the end if you don't want to but i talk more about that and you know the the fill line on your 
on your airlock is important too. You don't want it too full. Okay, well I hope this helps and be watching for the more videos coming out on your winemaking down the road. Thanks for watching, take care, and God bless.